Well, so I missed last week. You and Joe uh, dug in mm-hmm. on Life of Abraham, Genesis yep. 15, Power of Covenant. Yeah. Uh, really powerful time. Today we're going to keep going in Life of Abraham. Sure. And uh, uh, Genesis yeah. 17. So take us there. Yeah, I, I want to back up and say the reason this is so important, Zach, is that it's kind of like in the Scripture, the you want to get to the original to understand the now, mm-hmm. right? So that's why we always go back to Genesis 1 through 3. But in this narrative, when God says he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man, you got to understand this right. stuff because this is the the genesis of family, right. a multi-generational family. And because that's not only who we are, what we're called to, and Galatians 3 says... For those who believe and trust in Jesus, we are now sons of Abraham. So this family that's now the nation of Israel is also in the new covenant through Jesus, the family for eternity. It's the family of all peoples, not just one people. So these principles, you know, all the time in the Old Testament, they're types and shadows. They're foreshadowings of Jesus or yep. their sightings of Jesus or there's principles that we need to learn and grow in. And that's why the all the scripture is good for teaching. All of it is integrated way more than we think. And, and I just would just say to everybody listening, you know, that uh, so many times we're relegated to the truth that we are needing now that we miss the meta narrative of God's big story for yeah. all time. Yeah. And so you've got this both and. I need a word now right. to do today's bidding, but I need to keep in sight the big family story mm-hmm. so I don't get overwhelmed with my current victory or disappointment of the day. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so, for example, <clears throat> I, I don't know if you know this, Zach, but I'm going to be with Jesus forever. Amen. Like, eternity Amen. and the eternal family forever and nobody's going to stop that yeah. no matter what disappointment i have today no matter what challenge i have today no matter what tragedy or victory i'm going to be with jesus forever and ever and there'll be no more pain no more fears no more tears that this family that i'm trying to glimpse and capture in now in my life today even if it's disappointing it won't be disappointing for long because I'll be with him forever. Right. So there's a big meta narrative thought while I'm trying to love Laura today or love my family or love uh, someone in the church or forgive somebody. It's much easier to forgive somebody today when I realize that for eternity it's not going to matter. Like my little angst today really needs to be let go of so that I can lay hold of my eternal destiny Love in it. Jesus. So, all right, it. there you go. So here we go. So again, everybody, if you're listening, jump in. Genesis 17, a great passage of Scripture. God encounters Abraham again. He says, I'm God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. Mm. Woo! Now, I, I, let me help you out, bro. It, it doesn't mean walk before me and be perfect. It means let your heart motives be towards me. When you fail, I've already provided. But blameless is a heart posture. Like I am not trying to get my way. And when I am, I'm willing to be uh, honest about it. Um, So walk before me. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and I will multiply you exceedingly. And just in case you didn't hear, Abraham fell on his face. God talked with him again and said, as for me, Behold, my covenant is with you. You'll be a father of the multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham, for I've made you a father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful. I'll make nations of you, and kings will come forth from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you throughout their generations for everlasting covenant to be... To, uh, for, you to, for me to be God to you and to your descendants after you. So four times in this little intro of a few passages, he says, my covenant will be with you. I will make my covenant. This is called a unilateral covenant. God initiating with this man, Abraham, God in Genesis 15, making a way through the blood and the sacrifice. He is the initiator of the covenant. He's the keeper of the covenant. He's the enabler of the covenant. And all that Abraham needs to do is humble himself and believe. This is speaking 
of our salvation. This is speaking of our faith. But again, I want to just make sure, because covenant is not a word that we uh, are that familiar with in our uh, uh, in American uh, uh, lifestyle. But a covenant is an agreement binding two parties together unconditionally. So the original intent of marriage, when we say a man shall be cleaved to his wife, two shall become one flesh, that is, they will have a covenant before God that will not be broken apart from death. That's a man-to-man covenant, <coughs> but if they'll lean on God, it becomes a God and man covenant. So the reason marriages don't work is because we took God out of the equation. And you could say, well, they were believers. They had good hearts. How did they, they just couldn't make it work out. Well, listen, it's not just asking God to be involved. It's submitting to the rule and reign of God. It's not just my assent to believe that God's able or uh, to say, hey, before God, I make this marriage covenant. It's this belief that the rule and reign of God over our lives will always keep us together in the grace of God. And um, I use that marriage illustration to say that I am called to be a covenant-keeping man. To God, God, I submit to you. You are my Lord. I'm wedded to you forever. I am uh, my allegiance to you, my affections, my faithfulness. And when I am unfaithful, you've already provided for forgiveness so that I can step right back in to the fellowship. But I want to be a covenant keeper, not just with God, but I want to be a covenant keeper with men. I want to be, um, you know, I want to love you as a brother. And when I fail, I want to ask forgiveness, but then come right back in. I'm not going to pull away from you because God's put us together and called us family. So in every way, I want to lean, lean in. Paul said it this way. As far as it's possible with me, I'm going to be at peace with all men. Basically, I'm going to be right with everybody that I can on my end. Now, if they choose to break covenant, if they choose to go their own way, if they choose to push me away or or not have anything to do with me, I can't control that. So this isn't some weird codependent anxiety that I work with. But it's just, it's a heart posture of, man, you're my brother. Whatever it takes, I want to do everything on my end to make sure to keep our covenant that Jesus paid for so that we don't um, uh, misrepresent God's family. Yeah. Huge. Huge. You got thoughts on that? Uh, A couple of thoughts. I think that when I first started reading the Bible, there's so many names and so many stories that are all interesting. Right. But it's hard to keep track of who's the main character, who's going to appear in this verse or chapter, but you're never going to really hear from them again. And then there are terms that you, you read here, but then you don't pick up on again or whatnot. But one of the things I hear you saying is Abraham is one of those characters that runs throughout the scriptures. Right. So we encounter him here, but we're going to see him again and again and again and again throughout the scriptures. And so if you're new to the Bible, this is a guy to pay attention to. Yeah. And then the term covenant and the different ways covenants are used is not a minor term in the Bible. It's actually a really central term yep. that many of us in our generation probably don't know a ton about. Sure. We probably haven't done a lot of in-depth biblical study on the different types of covenants. So you're saying Abraham is really important. Mm-hmm. This idea of covenant is really important. Mm-hmm. So these are things that we need to really dig into God's word on as we learn the, the basis of a multi-generational family on mission. Yeah. Is that- yeah, yeah. Yeah, like like let's even take it up a notch. Okay. Right. So Eleo like Ale- Ale- is behind the camera here. Leo, I want to help you out here, buddy. So the <coughs> Old Testament, another word for testament is covenant. Mm-hmm. This is God's old the, the the covenant of God in the old covenant. New Testament literally means new covenant. Right. So you could say the Bible is broken up into two parts, the old covenant and the new covenant. Right. And this is reiterated um, in Jeremiah, where it says, "I'll make a new covenant with mm-hmm. you. I will literally put your laws in my in your my laws will go in your heart, not just in your head, not just through a prophet preaching, but I'm going to put them mm-hmm. in your heart. So that I'm going to take the principles of the old covenant and make it a new covenant right. reality, so that it'll be a forever covenant, and you'll never have to 
feel apart from God, but you'll always be with God. So to say covenant is a big deal would be an understatement. Right. Literally, the Bible mm-hmm. is the old covenant, new covenant of God. So again, let me let me kind of get this practical for those that may be kind of saying, all right, hey, give me some handles for this. Um, when I look at the life of Abraham, um, what it stirs in me is this realization that God has initiated with me Mm -hmm. out of his love for me Mm -hmm. and offered me a covenant that I've always longed for. Mm -hmm. They say this deal in attachment theory that we're born into a world looking for who is going to love us. So a child, they they, talk about that 17 inches between the, the eyes and the in the arm of the mother, and that's how a child attaches for comfort, for care, for nurture. And we wake up looking for who's going to love me, mm-hmm. who's going to love me unconditionally. We, we, we don't know those words. We're not familiar with those terms. But I would say it even next level. We're, we're looking and, uh, for who are we covenanted to mm-hmm. because we're made for covenant. We're not made just for willful and unwillful relationships or you know, the, the funny term willy nilly, you know, like I'm coming and going whenever I want, however I feel like it. I'm just an independent free will agent. But that's how you end up getting anxious and and mentally ill and broken because you don't see relationship as a need or you've been so wounded by it you've decided I'm gonna go independent. Right. But everybody's made for covenant. Right. So when I read this, I put myself, wow. God's reiterating to his son Abraham in four different ways in Mm -hmm. seven scriptures, Mm -hmm. I'm making a covenant with you. I'm coming after you. I'm renaming you. I'm going to multiply you. I'm going to make you something of value. And because Abraham's a human that questions, am I valuable? Right. Is somebody going to love me? Do I have a future and a hope? Mm -hmm. Isn't that that amazing? That, amazing. that, That life is not that complex. It's very straightforward. Who's going to love me? Who am I going to love in a meaningful way? Mm -hmm. And and it has meaning. That's what everybody's longing for. In God, through the story of Abraham, we see this covenant community. Now, we're dealing with an individual, so this is where I want to kind of finish the the run here because stay stay with us, podcasters, because we want to finish this thought. God told Abraham, I will make you a family that will bless all the families of the world. Mm -hmm. So, Abraham, I'm visiting you not just for you. Right. I'm visiting you for them or for all of them. I've got to start somewhere, bud, so I'm starting with you. And therefore, we're going to multiply you out in such a way that everyone has an opportunity to be a son or daughter of the living God. And the covenant that you and I are experiencing, Abraham, my desire is that you get this down so that that can be what everyone experiences Mm -hmm. by faith in the Savior to come, in the ultimate sacrifice, not just you and Isaac, but the sacrifice and provision um, of Jesus. So again, back to the uh, value um, commitment that... Um, I remember as a kid, you know, um, I, uh, I was always, um, I was a bit of a dreamer, um, and was always looking for, you know, value through what I did or, or, um, uh, or somebody around me mm-hmm. or whatever. And, um, and the, the, the beauty of that, not finding that in my parents, uh, finding that for a little bit in a brother, but then he went off to college. Finding that, I, uh, or not finding that in my peers. The beauty of not finding it in my surroundings was that I began to have this ache in my heart. Is God real? I wonder if God's real. If he's real, does he care about me? If he's real, can I find him? In that vacuum in my life or in my inability to rightly connect with people in a full holistic way is what made room for God. Then once I found God and started talking to him and walking with him, it began to make sense. Hey, I want to 
walk and talk with other people that know God. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like I had this multi-generational family on mission, what is covenant? It was by nature, now that I knew God, I needed to know other people that knew God. It was by the Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. So by the Spirit, we, we have a spiritual family that we're drawn to. And then, you know, then that disappoints us. And then we either withdraw Mm -hmm. or we work it through. Mm -hmm. So this is where I want to land. Do you withdraw or do you work it through? Okay. Covenant keepers work it through with God. God, that was offensive. I prayed for my mom and she died. God, I asked for your help uh, in a relationship and they left me. God, I asked for provision, and it seemed like everybody else got the car, and I'm still walking. You know, what, you know, little things to big things. God, I wanted you to feel close. I didn't feel you today. Mm-hmm. So we have our disappointments. What I decided early on, for some reason, just by the grace of God, I decided um, if there's a problem between me and God, if problem's on my end, I need to learn more about him. Mm-hmm. not sit around and accuse him. Mm. He's the covenant initiator. He's the covenant keeper. So I'm going to work it through instead of withdrawal. Mm. With other believers, uh, I had great relationships early on with believers. And then I found out some people were lying to me and they were hurtful and they talked about my back or they, they weren't who they said they were. Or they fell into sin, had a lot of disappointment in the midst of beautiful kind of Christian community. And I thought, okay, well, what am I going to do? Am I just going to walk away from Christian community because people are imperfect? Mm-hmm. The Bible says we got to work it through, not withdraw. And that's, you know, fast forward 42 years. I'm so glad that even today, Laura and I are still working it through instead of withdrawing. Mm-hmm. And I would admonish anybody out there listening today Wherever you are in your walk with Jesus today, you have been brought into a family through his initiative of love. You have been um, nurtured and cared for by the Holy Spirit that lives within you. And he's called you to live in community of loving, sacrificial relationships. And when those fail, he's called you to be a solution Uh, not an opt-out. So I've got to constantly be working through because there's a greater glory and a greater purpose. Mm. All right, I'll pause. Tell me your thoughts. I love it. I mean, I think it's it's so challenging. Some things I hear you coming back to is sometimes we can judge God based on our circumstances. Right. And you were saying, I'm going to base my circumstance on the character of God. And if there's an issue going on here, I'm going to search my own heart of God. where, Where do I need to search myself? And... The resolve of, as best as I'm able, I want to be a person that leans into relationships mm-hmm. and works it through rather than when we hit a bump in the road, pain in life or disappointment, the opt out of I'm, I'm going to pull back and, yeah. and be just on my own. Yeah. It's, it's again, it's, it's being a covenant keeper. Mm-hmm. So covenant keepers work it through. They don't withdraw in our marriage, in our relationships and in our life. And when that happens the reality of what God is speaking through his word to Abraham, Abraham, I'm a covenant keeping God, Abraham, I'm with you. That reality of God being with us and God being a covenant keeper gives us power to be covenant keepers ourselves Mm -hmm. and then fulfill the promise that God gave to us. Mm -hmm. So as long as it goes to the podcast, I can go tangential random. So just, just one last random thought. You guys know the story of Abraham. He uh, doesn't see, uh, he and Sarah aren't able to conceive, so they have Ishmael because of impatience. Yeah. The promise was was not coming fast enough, so they did an Ishmael. They went there, they, they went the best they thought. Right. You got to wait it all the way through. Then they get Isaac, and then he's asked to sacrifice Isaac. So here's, here's the principle. The promises of God... Uh, are not cheap. Like they cost you something. Mm -hmm. When God puts something in your heart, an ideal of family, an ideal of church, an ideal of mission, an ideal of purpose, and you know it's the Lord, or you biblically see it in the scriptures, you're going to have to work it through to see it come to fulfillment. 
No promise of God do you get cheaply. Salvation is free, but working out your salvation will cost you your life. And when you'll give your life, though, to a promise that God has already clearly stated in his word, then you can see in your lifetime a fulfillment of those promises, even as Abraham ultimately did his. Love it. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. So I think that what I love and have been so challenged by you and by God's word on the leaning in on relationships is I love that. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on there are times and places in Scripture where uh, the leaning in isn't isn't right anymore. Sure. It's, there's a yeah. parting of ways for various and sundry reasons, yeah. and sometimes things we did, sometimes some someone else did. Sure. Help help me. Just what would you say to that? How do you think about those type of situations where, in the end, it just did not work out that sure. we leaned it through and worked it through? Yeah. What, what's your advice for? those times and places in life or relationships we might sure. be in right now yeah. where we're trying to figure out our way forward and we want to honor God. We want to be sure. blameless. Yeah. And there's some really significant uh, challenges going on. Yeah, uh, of course, um, this is one of these three-day teaching deals mm -hmm. on relationships. But let me, let me say it this way. Again, I take the simple phrase, as far as it's possible with me, mm -hmm. I'm going to be at peace with all men. How can I love you? How can I serve you? How can we find agreement? And if we can't, now, uh, if it's just a, we have two different opinions and, and it's in your best interest or the interest of the people I'm leading for us to kind of go our separate ways, give each other space, let me do that with a good spirit. Let mm -hmm. me do it with a generous spirit. Mm -hmm. If you're in sin, then I will speak the truth to you in love. If you decide to pull away from me, I can't control that. Mm -hmm. Or if you choose to come after me, I can forgive you, I can bless you, I can do the best I can, but it's as far as it possible with me, I'm going to either give you the space that you want on a difference of opinion, or I'm going to address sin and try to work it through, bring you to repentance or me to repentance. Um, if it's a forgiveness issue, I'm going to try to forgive and restore but ultimately, all I'm doing is constantly creating environments for health and the ability to move forward, or if we go in different directions, to do it with, this, with the most grace that we can. Mm -hmm. So I'm not anxiously grasping or demanding that every relationship work out perfect and that we have to do everything together, even though we have to be in the same local church. I believe God at seasons calls people to different local churches, but I want to do it from a posture of what can I do for us to honor Jesus, love one another, and um, walk in the grace of God? Mm -hmm. And then if my spirit's right, whatever that practical outworking is, I'm good with that. I just, I am now. I've had mm -hmm. to learn that. Yeah. I've had to learn to be good with different opinions, people going to different places, feeling God letting do different things, and keep a good spirit. Mm -hmm. And then, as one friend said, make sure to keep the door open for the returning. Mm. The returning of a relationship, the returning of working together, returning of family. And I think that's also a posture thing internally. And the practicals, again, are the three days of journey. Yeah. 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 Well, thanks for sharing that. Sure. I really appreciate this. And I love the challenge to uh, look at God's covenant keeping nature yep. to us. And then for us to be covenant keepers with one another and with the Lord as yep. best we can by the Spirit. Yep. So as a wrap, I just want to want to leave this deal. It's Genesis 17, uh, 1 through 8, power-packed. Just read the Bible. And then I want to leave you with this phrase. Make sh sure that as a covenant-keeping man or woman of God, you're looking to work it through, not withdraw. Mm. And even if in the end, that means that we choose different places where we go, different ways that we serve the Lord, at least I worked it through instead of withdrew because I'm a covenant-keeping man. Amen. Amen.